Today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Instead of covering a story from what is written history, I will be covering a myth. A myth of the creation of a peoples, to be more exact. The story of the Nez Perce is unique and very interesting, and over the next three weeks, I will be covering their story, starting with their creation myth. This story follows a regular character in many Native American mythologies, Coyote, who the Nez Perce call Isiyeye. Coyote, or Itzieye, is often a trickster in mythology, and his actions usually prove to be very consequential. Itzieye was building a fish ladder at Salilo Falls, a former waterfall near the Dolls, Oregon, that was destroyed via construction of a dam. As Itzieye did this, someone shouted at him, Why are you doing that? All of the people are gone. Itzieye said to himself, Then I will stop doing this because I was doing it for the people. Itsiyeye traveled upstream toward the region of the Salmon River. Along the way, he stopped and bathed, saying to himself, I cannot make myself repulsive to his taste, lest he vomit or spit me out, before covering himself in clay. Itsiyeye then tied himself to three mountains with rope and walked over one of the ridges where he saw a great and massive head. Itsiyeye hid in the grass and gazed at the monster. He had never seen such a large thing in his life, so gigantic that his body went over the horizon. Itsiyeye shouted at the monster, We are going to inhale each other. And the monster began searching for Itsiyeye, but could not find him because the clay Itsiyeye covered himself with concealed his location in the grass. Isiyeye had a bag on him. In the bag were five stone knives with pitch and a flint to start a fire. Isiyeye shook the grass he was in and shouted again, Monster, we are going to inhale each other. Powerfully, Isiyeye drew in his breath as the monster stood there, shaking and twitching. Isiyeye again shouted, now, you inhale me, for already you have swallowed all the people, so swallow me too, lest I become lonely. So the monster inhaled with the power of a strong wind, and Itsiyeye dove into its mouth. Itsiyeye walked down the monster's throat. When he arrived at the heart, Itsiyeye pulled out one of his knives, cutting pieces of the fat off to throw to the people below. He then pulled out his pitch and flint and started a fire near the monster's heart, with the smoke rising to its head, causing the monster to squirm in pain. Itsiyeye began cutting at the heart, but his stone knife broke, so he pulled out another of the five he brought. Itsiyeye then shouted to the people below, Gather all the bones you can carry and bring them to the monster's openings, pile them up, and when he dies, kick them outside. He then resumed cutting with his second knife, but it also broke, as well as the third and fourth knives. By this point, the monster's heart hung only by a small piece of muscle, with Itsiyeye cutting at it with his fifth and final knife. The heart was hanging by a thread when the last knife broke, so Itsiyeye jumped on the heart and tore the last strand with his bare hands. After the monster fell, the people kicked the bones out and left the monster. The people began to carve the great monster, and Itsiyeye began to give portions of the monster's body to various peoples all over the land, toward the sunset, sunrise, the warm and the cold, and as he did this, helping to determine each people's destiny, the Cordeline, the Flathead, the Orioles, the Crow, the Sioux, and others all received portions of the monster. Now Fox came to Itsiyeye and said, What is the meaning of this, Coyote? You have given all of the body to faraway lands, but yourself and your immediate locality nothing. Itsiyeye turned to the people and said, Bring me some water with which to wash my hands. They brought him water, and he washed his hands after sprinkling the local regions with the bloody water, after which he said, You may be little people, but you will be powerful. Even though you will be little people, because I have deprived you, you will be very, very manly. These people became known as the Nimipu, or in English, the Nez Perce. 
This was the creation story of the Nez Perce, and they would live in the Salmon River country for millennia to come. The monster's heart is still there, where the monster would have died, and you can visit the heart of the monster right outside of modern Kamiya, Idaho, as a stop on the Nez Perce Trail. However, in the late 1800s, the Nez Perce would find themselves facing off against a new monster in the form of the United States government. Thanks for watching.